Hello, my name is Sebastian from Shonko Music and I want to show you how I use the Ocean Machine with my Hydra synthesizer. Everything here is connected with a Behringer X32 rack mounted mixing table. So as an external FX unit I use here the Ocean Machine on a mix bus. And I want to show you the difference between the internal effects from the Hydra synthesizer to the Ocean Machine. If you want to do ambient music style and want the emotional wave pads in the background, they are created with delay and reverb, and the Ocean Machine can be very helpful for you. So first I created a patch here from the Hydra Synthesizer, with the Hydra Synthesizer, and you see in the right top corner my Ocean Machine, and here also I created a patch. So the FX chain is two delays, one reverb. So the first delay is a tape delay, the second delay is an analog delay, and the reverb is a plate. On the Hydro Synthesizer, I prepared also the reverb, it's a cloud reverb, and the delay is a LCR delay. So I first start with a dry signal, and then I will turn internally the effects on from the Hydro Synthesizer, and then I switch to the Ocean Machine. I hope this video is helpful for you to understand the difference, what I mean, and maybe you can also create easily ambient style music with some patches. So, enjoy! First I will start with a dry signal from the patch I created on the Hydro Synthesizer. And for the delay I use a LRC delay with a delay time from 1.4 seconds. My reverb is here a cloud reverb with a decay time of 16 seconds. It depends on the settings you are using when you turn on delay and reverb. Sometimes it's your signal is a little bit more silent, so you have turned up the loudness. Now I will turn on the delay. I trigger only one note so that you can hear the delay. So I think it sounds very good. I have to damp the sound signal, so sometimes if you use a delay it could be feel a little bit more depressed from the background to forward, so that's a little bit can it can be a little bit noisy. So if you want to have a delay that's very very slowly in the background, holding your your uh, instrument signal, so sometimes it's it's very necessary and very useful if you try some settings. So I show you what I mean here. Because my cutoff is a little bit more down than the patch was created for, it sounds not really bad. But when I raise up the cutoff, you see that the delay sound at itself is a little bit too, too shiny for me. So that's why. I turn down the wet tone and rise up a little bit the feedback of it, delay itself. Thank you. 
So for me, sometimes uh, if you use a delay and it's too much, it can disturb the sound as itself. So the main part of all that stuff is the sound you created and delay and reverb give it a kind of creativity volume in my eyes. So it's very, very important for me that the delay is nearly in the background and is holding that, that instrument or tone. And it's, it's not too much. So let's listen to the reverb. I play one note so that you can hear the reverb completely. So if I rise the cutoff a little bit more up, then you can make your own decision also when you create an effects for yourself. So it depends on the frequency you give to the FX. So that's very important because sometimes when you rise up some parameters or settings like cutoff, it's a complete different tone at the end from the start to the end of the frequency. So if you want to have a frequency that, like the delay I showed, it's holding your note, your instrument, it's very important that you play with the settings because at the end of the day, it's too loud or too harsh or a little bit too, too much volume at itself. It can just be disturbed. So let me try to show you what I mean. You see also my high damp and my low damp and my tone are settings I use here because I want that the reverb is nearly in the background holding that instrument. So now I rise the cutoff a little bit more up. You hear clearly the reverb, but it's not so pushing to the forward. So when I change that, you will hear the difference. So it sounds very digital. I think it sounds not good in my ears. So maybe <laughs> some person like that, but for me it's too digital. I love it when it sounds a little bit more natural. So I loaded my standard setting here. It's very e easily when you change the patch and go back, then you have the original settings, I programmed that. Now delay and reverb together in the settings I'm using here for this patch. Delay and reverb together, playing one note.
So when I rise up the cutoff, at itself, it's in digital synthesizer, the reverb and delay sounding a little bit digital. But you can avoid that in the, if, you, if you change some settings and parameters and listen to them when you change the frequencies of, this, of, of, of the sound itself. So now I want to show you the ocean machine. So now I will turn off delay and reverb from the high dose synthesizer so that we can hear again a dry signal. And now I will turn on the ocean machine. the level a little bit from the ocean machine. Oh, I think 10 is fine. It's a very nice emotional wave pad sounding sound in the background, only created by delay and reverb. So I play one note again to see how this emotional wave pad is creating by triggering by a note. So here is a short note. And now some more notes and I play a little bit with a cutoff. So it sounds absolutely fantastic in my ears. So, and when you want to go complete crazy, you can now additionally turn on the FX from the Hydra synthesizer. So at the end of the day, we are using three delays and two reverbs.
So I hope you enjoyed it and maybe you understand more the difference why it's very interesting to use an external FX unit. This is specialized, specialized for <laughs> ambient music or otherwise if you want to put two FX units together and create some George's patches. So I hope you have a great day and maybe we see you soon. So bye bye.